Good morning, metalheads of the internet, and welcome to a brand new episode of The Metal Meltdown. Today, we're talking about something a little bit unexpected, a little bit funkier than normal. We're talking about an album from a band called Dream Widow. It is their self-titled album, and it is a project constructed by the one and only Dave Grohl. You heard correctly, ladies and gentlemen, Dave fucking Grohl, former drummer for Nirvana, current singer and guitarist for The Foo Fighters, multi-platinum Grammy award-winning rock star, has put out a full-blown heavy metal record. Now, to be fair, Dave has always been, by his own admission, a bona fide metal head, and as such, this Dream Widow project is hardly the first time that Dave has flirted with metal. He has, in the past, collaborated with metal icons like Lemmy Kilmeister and Tony Iommi. He has also recorded and produced music for and toured with the likes of Killing Joke, Tenacious D, Ghost. Some of you may even remember this little gem that Dave Grohl dropped in 2004. Probot, a full-blown metal record, one featuring... Members of Voivod, Corrosion of Conformity, Napalm Def, DRI, uh, you know, Tom G. Warrior from Celtic Frost, Max Cavalera from Soulfly and Sepultura, King Diamond, and the aforementioned Lemmy Kilmeister, Kim Thale from Soundgarden, and so, so many more. And, and just as diverse as the roster was the actual sound of this record. Like, it's equal parts death metal, thrash metal, Hardcore punk and crossover thrash, doom metal, black metal, it's all over the fucking place. For a very small but very vocal minority of people, I imagine this news must be very troubling, upsetting, perhaps even offensive. I imagine there are people sitting behind their keyboards right now frothing at the mouth because Dave Grohl's a mainstream rock star. He can't make metal. He's a poser. He's a sellout. But the harsh reality is Dave Grohl has been making metal more or less his entire professional career. I mean, even before joining Nirvana, he played in a bunch of underground uh, thrash and punk bands. So, you know, get over it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like, fucking grow up. And do so quickly, because honestly, Dream Widow's kind of great. Similar to the Probot album, this feels like a love letter to like a lot of great extreme music and heavy metal from the late 80s and into the early 90s, which itself may sound kind of weird for some of you. Anyone who has been following uh, the development and production of this record will know that Dave Grohl has called it more of a, a death thrash record. Those elements are definitely on here, and I would say that aesthetically, conceptually, this does feel all around like a death thrash record. Even that album artwork feels like something that might have been on a possessed uh, demo back in the day, albeit, you know, a touch more polished and refined. But ultimately, calling this a full blown death thrash metal album is just wholly inaccurate. Like, there's so much going on here. There's doom metal, there's sludge metal, there's some alternative metal, there's some progressive metal, there's some first and second wave black metal thrown into the mix, and it's all very, very, very well done. The Sweet Abyss, for instance, is every bit as gnarly as it is genuinely unpredictable. It opens up on a pretty raucous and bloodthirsty note with some killer grooves that feel like a cross between Slayer and very old-school White Zombie. But once that chorus kicks in, we're basically in, like, late 80s, early 90s alternative metal territory. Like, suddenly this feels more akin to, like, something that Faith No More might have put out in the very early 90s. Then you've got Cold, which is this very ritualistic, menacing kind of doom and sludge metal, eerily reminiscent of classic Crowbar, but streamlined for a much broader audience. My boy Dave killing it on vocals as well. So heavy, so soulful, so good. Is it weird that I now want to hear like a full-blown doom sludge metal record from like the Foo Fighters? Because I kind of want to hear that now, straight up. 
Speaking of doom metal, you've also got tracks like Becoming and Lacrimus de Ibrius, the former of which is seven and a half minutes of just really uncompromising, noisy, blackened doom. There are some like brief little moments with a little bit more enthusiasm and, and melody, for, but for the most part, it's pretty much just really dark, evil, painful, blackened doom metal. And I kind of love it. Though the latter cut may be one of my favorites on the record. It's a mostly instrumental kind of doom metal piece that goes through many different shifts and, and changes. It starts off feeling more like a traditional American doom cut, then it throws some more wild percussion and, and grooves at you in the vein of Black Sabbath. Then there's a, a brief foray into like full-blown old-school black metal. Totally badass shit, man. This track alone, honest to God, five out of five. I think it's a fucking fantastic song. The closest we really get to thrash and death metal on this thrash death metal album would be through the tracks Encino and March of the Insane. The former of which opens up this record on an especially exciting and, and bloodthirsty note. It's very in your face. It's very angry. It's just like pure fucking piss and vinegar thrash metal with some ever so subtle grindcore spices. Like there are some pretty hectic rhythms and breaks that would not be out of place on a classic Napalm Death record. Meanwhile, the latter track finds a comfortable spot in between old school thrash metal in the vein of very early Metallica and some very grimy, scuzzy, blackened thrash in the vein of a band like Toxic Holocaust. Honestly, I just think this is a great album. I was expecting it to be pretty decent because Dave Grohl just has a pretty solid reputation for making good music on a regular basis, but I wasn't expecting something this honest, this evil, this dark, and this genuinely clever, especially because in a lot of interviews leading up to the release of this record, Dave Grohl made it clear that he was more or less pulling this out of his ass. And doing so, may I add, in a remarkably small amount of time, because from what I understand, Dream Widow was supposed to premiere alongside the Studio 666 horror comedy that Dave Grohl and the rest of the Foo Fighters worked on. That was released on February 26th. Today is not February 26th. And subsequent interviews with Rolling Stone magazine and The Howard Stern Show made it pretty clear that Dave Grohl missed quite a few deadlines to get this album out, and pretty much up until maybe about a week and a half ago was working overtime to get this bad boy finished. But now it's done, it's out there for everyone to hear, and I hope everyone does hear it, because it's legitimately a pretty great record. So, four to five from me. I, I genuinely really enjoyed every single second of this. Uh, I, I love all the songs on here. I think Dave Grohl, and I assume the rest of the Foo Fighters, I'm not actually sure. Dave might have just recorded this himself. If that's the case, awesome. Wow, congratulations. But if the rest of the Foo Fighters did contribute to this thing, then hats off to them as well. This is kind of new territory for some of them, and I think they handle it really well. I have no idea what plans, if any, Grohl has for this Dream Widow side project, but if I may put in my two cents, Dave, buddy, I would not at all object to hearing more from this project, or at the very least, I wouldn't object to hearing you play more heavy metal. You've done a lot. You've played a lot of heavy metal over the years, but I feel like it's actually been a while. Like, this Probot record is like 17 years old, and it's been a while since you hung out with Tenacious D and Ghost, so... Fucking get at it, buddy. Do another Dream Widow record. I'd, I'd honestly love to hear more. So, yeah. Four to five. It's a great record. Wait. So, yeah. Four to five. It's a great fucking record. Um, that's it, really. Yeah, just go fucking listen to it. It's fucking awesome. That is it for the Metal Meltdown. I'm not an expert, nor do I claim to be. So what do you think? Do you like this record? Do you not like this record? And what do you want to hear from me next? Thank you for watching. Make sure you press subscribe right here so you get updates on the Metal Meltdown-y fucking immediately. And as always, you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.